What's up guys? So something I started doing ever since The Last Jedi and then Solo as the movies came out, I started taking questions from you all about those specific stories, and since Star Wars Resistance just wrapped up its first season, I thought that it would be fun to do that for Star Wars Resistance Season 1. So I took 20 questions, 10 from Patreon and 10 from YouTube, and today I'm going to answer them. So our first one comes from Brock Montori, who asks if I think Season 2 will tie into Episode 9. Uh, yes, I think probably, but not right away. So I'm expecting that season two is going to premiere probably in October or in the fall like season one did. And then we're going to get a mid-season break probably in December right before episode nine comes out. And then it'll pick back up after episode nine. I think that maybe we'll get some teases for episode nine in that first half. But more likely, the second half is going to strongly, more strongly, tie into Episode Nine. Like, I wouldn't expect, say, the Knights of Ren to show up in Season 2, Part 1. But in the second half, maybe. I mean, if the Knights of Ren are in Episode Nine, that's when I think all bets are off. I think they're probably going to stay away, or at least not get too specific with any Episode Nine stuff uh, in the first half of Season 2. But after the fact, yeah, they can do whatever they want. All bets are off because then there's no danger of giving anything away. Uh, I feel like uh, Star Wars Rebels did something like this, like right around the time Rogue One came out, like right after <laughs> Rogue One, they started to tie in a little more strongly. They had Saw Gerrera in episodes and stuff like that. So I, I think we're probably going to get something similar in Star Wars Resistance Season 2. David Moritz wants to know what characters from the movies I think could show up in Season 2. Really, almost anyone in the sequel trilogy. I mean, I'm starting to think that part of a live-action actor's contract uh, goes in with animation, similar to, I already brought him up, but Forrest Whitaker and Saw Gerrera. Uh, they had him come in and do some work for Star Wars Rebels. Oscar Isaac is in Star Wars Resistance, and honestly, I love his work in Resistance. It sounds like he's having a blast the whole time. Uh, Gwendolyn Christie returns as Captain Phasma. Again, I think that as we get closer to Episode Nine, and especially after, that's when we might see things tie in. Uh, there's still the potential for connections in the first half of the season. I am kind of assuming that the first half is going to be about finding the Resistance at all. And then the second half, then it'll be more strongly tied in. But, I mean, pretty much anyone that's involved in the Resistance, I think, could return. I mean, Poe, obviously. Leia, obviously. They've already been in the show. But Finn, Rose, Rey. I mean, Kylo Ren's already been mentioned. Like, I feel like anyone that appears in Episode Nine or The Last Jedi could potentially show up in Star Wars Resistance as well. And that was just kind of baked into their contract. Like, oh, by the way, you have to do some voiceover for Star Wars Resistance. Thanks. Eric Coach asks if the rumored one-year time jump between The Last Jedi and Episode Nine is enough time for a three to four season run of the show. Honestly, yeah. I mean, it does seem like there would be a lot crammed in there. I, the first season of Star Wars Resistance was supposed to take place over about six months before The Force Awakens. And then I guess if the second season takes place over the course of six months, and then the third season over the course of six months, sure, I mean, I think it could work. Thinking back to Avatar The Last Bender, Airbender, I always call it that, Avatar The Last Bender. <laughs> Avatar The Last Airbender, uh, that whole series takes place over the course of about one year. So I, I think that they could do three more seasons in the space of a year uh, for Star Wars Resistance, totaling in four seasons, if that's the route they go. But really, I think they could probably do even more. I mean, the timeline of the show could vary from season to season, but look at The Clone Wars, and they shoved six seasons they had like eight or nine planned uh we're about to get our seventh and all that takes place in the course of seven years i don't really think they pay too much attention to the timeline and like well is this too much to happen over the course of three years it's like yeah i mean probably that's a whole lot of adventures but it's fine like it's just let's get some more adventures with these characters anakin and ahsoka and obi-wan because it's fun 
So I think Star Wars Resistance could follow a similar path. And who's to say that it doesn't go beyond Episode Nine? I think that it makes sense. I mean, it depends on what happens in Nine, I guess. But I think it makes sense for Resistance to end with Episode Nine. But uh, who knows? Philip Zer Niden wants to know if the Colossus could wind up in the Unknown Regions, potentially meeting up with Ezra and Thrawn. It could end up in the Unknown Regions. I really doubt it's going to tie in with the Ezra and Thrawn stuff, partly because I just hope that they haven't been stuck out there for over three decades. That seems like way too long. We know that Sabine and Ahsoka went off searching for Ezra. Like, I hope that they don't search for him for that much time. That is so long. Uh, I think that Resistance is probably far enough away from the time period of Rebels that it's going to be its own thing. So I'll say, yes, potentially they wind up in the Unknown Regions. I think that would be cool, and especially it, it would cause some trouble for them to get back to the Resistance in the Known Galaxy because the Unknown Regions are unknown. Like, how are they going to find their way back? That could be cool. So I guess maybe thematically it could tie in with Thrawn and Ezra, maybe it could tie in some clues like, hey, someone's been here before and it was a Chiss and a Jedi. Like, yeah, I, I could kind of see that happening, but I don't think Ezra and Thrawn are going to appear. Uh, and I still think that even that link is unlikely. I think Resistance is probably going to be its own story. Joe Labrose asks if I think season two will get more serious in tone like Star Wars Rebels did. Yes, absolutely. I, I think that Resistance is very closely following the trajectory that Star Wars Rebels set up. I mean, already, if you look at season one and compare those two shows, and I've said this multiple times before, but uh, season one of Star Wars Rebels was mostly located on Lothal, and the same can be said for Resistance. It's mostly located on Castellon and the Colossus, and then at the end... The world opens up for the characters, and they have to deal with the consequences of whatever happened at the end of that first season, and it's the same kind of thing, because, I mean, these are shows targeted at a younger audience, but if you're eight or nine, and you're growing up with this show by the time it's over, you're a teenager, and, like, they do age up these shows to match the audience, like, they want the audience to stay with it. And you change a lot over the course of those years, like late uh, elementary school to early middle school. You, you do a lot of growing up. And yeah, I think that very likely season two is going to continue to be more and more mature. I mean, Star Wars Resistance already got way more mature, I would say, by the end. Of, well, about the same level of maturity as Star Wars Rebel season one, I think. Uh, where at the beginning it's very goofy and lighthearted and you're stealing TIE fighters and stuff and like Kaz is doing something really goofy but by the end Kanan is in mortal danger and Hosni and Prime is blown up and there are some heavy things to deal with so yeah I think that season two is going to continue that and I really hope so because right now I mean I'm enjoying Star Wars Resistance a lot but it hasn't reached the heights that I know it can, like Star Wars Rebels did and the Clone Wars did. Uh, I do think it had maybe the strongest first season of all three of those shows, but there still hasn't been like that one episode that made me go, okay, this is top tier Star Wars, like both the Clone Wars and Rebels have multiple episodes like that. So uh, I didn't feel like Rebels reached that for me until near the end of season two. So yeah, I'm hoping that Resistance continues to match that, and by the end of Resistance Season 2, I'll be like, okay, that is some top-tier Star Wars storytelling. Michael Barub wants to know which of the characters could go along with Ahsoka as someone who wasn't loved immediately, but will be down the line. I mean, the obvious answer is Kaz. <laughs> like, he and Ezra and Ahsoka, I think, all follow a similar path, where they're introduced, and the audience is at first like, okay, this character's too much, I don't like them. And then as the show goes on, you learn more and more about them, you fall in love with them. I'll admit I didn't really have that happen with Ezra for me. I thought Ezra was fine, but he wasn't even close to my favorite character in Rebels. Uh, Ahsoka, I really love. Kaz, I <laughs> immediately turned around on. I mean, 
still early on in the show, I was like face palming because he was being so goofy and so over the top. Uh, I specifically remember the part in the Children of Tahar when he's like just trying to open up a grate and he's opening it up from the wrong side and the kids go and open it for him. And it's like it's played for laughs. And I understand that. But I'm still like, Kaz, just slow down. Like, think about what you're doing. Try not to look so incompetent. But by the end of the season, like I did not have that opinion of him. And that's part of his journey. Like he is this rich, spoiled kid who craves excitement and craves adventure things that yoda and empire like speaks out against like that's not what jedi want not that kaz is a jedi but you know similar message so he's craving all these things and he doesn't realize how serious it is at at the start like he is trying to be a spy and all but it's like i'm having fun and it's throughout the course of the series that he realizes that this has some heavy consequences to it And that's kind of what his path has all been about. And I've really enjoyed watching it. So I like Kaz a lot. Robert Miller asks if Tan could become a full-on antagonist. At this point, I could see her story going either way, and that excites me to no end. I was pretty confident that Tam would be tempted by the First Order, but ultimately would stay with her friends. And that didn't happen. I'm thrilled that they actually went with Tam going with the First Order, Not only that, but it makes complete sense. I understand her decision. Uh, Her friends, her family lied to her. They didn't trust her. They didn't respect her enough to tell her the truth. And, I mean, Kaz was getting special treatment from Yeager. He was getting to fly the fireball when it was promised to Tam. And then the First Order swoops in and Tierney's like, here's some great food. Let's hang out in the high tower. Like, here's the truth. And, yeah, I get it. I get why she would go with the First Order. Now, she doesn't know about Hosni and Prime yet, and I feel like once she figures that out, her attitude will change. Um, I hope it does, but if it doesn't, like, yeah, she might be a full-on antagonist. And I'm into that story as long as they keep uh, giving it the attention it deserves like they have so far. Like, I want to understand why she stays with the First Order, even though she knows that they blew up the whole Hosnian system, if she figures that out. Uh, but I like the idea of seeing, like, the opposite of the Agent Callus story. Like, we've had a lot of Imperial Defector stories. Uh, I kind of like seeing an Imperial or First Order recruitment story. So, yeah, I could see it happening. The Bobby Lynn wants to know who I want to see get more development in Season 2. Easy, the Aces. Um, before the show started, they put out a whole trailer about the Aces of the Colossus, with interviews uh, with all the voice actors, including Stephen Stanton, who does Griff, and the idea of this former Imperial pilot who seems like a gruff guy, probably hence the name Griff, uh, knowing what's going on in his head while he fights against the First Order, what the Empire became. Like, I really want to know more about him. And that dude got like three lines the whole season, and they were all very generic like anyone could have had those lines is like oh here we go again or thanks kid and it's like steven stanton's great use him uh also hype phase on i love donald phase on i'm a huge scrubs fan you can see my uh scrubs funko pop back there um I, I i love him and i really do love hype right now he's kind of the bigs of the show for me like someone who gets enough screen time and I really like his personality and stuff. Uh, I, I love when he's on camera. But again, he has this whole history with the First Order that we don't really know about. But he doesn't like them. And I want to know why. And outside of him, really none of the Aces got any development at all. So yeah, I hope we get more time spent with the Aces. And uh, well, I guess Tora got plenty of screen time. Outside of Tora and then Hype, uh, the other three got like no attention at all. William Tressel asks how I think the Colossus civilians might feel about being put in mortal danger thanks to the actions of the main characters. I really hope that they address that in Season 2. Justin Ridge, the executive producer in an interview, suggested very heavily that they would, and that's great, because I completely agree that there are a ton of people that live on the Colossus, and they didn't have a say on whether or not the station would go mobile and then jump into hyperspace. A lot of them were probably very confused. And we saw that as the First Order started to come onto the platform, not everyone hated the First Order. 
It seemed like the public opinion started to be changed, but at first people were like, cool, the First Order's here, security's great, people like Tam. So I think there probably are going to be some First Order sympathizers there uh, that are not too happy about being uprooted and taken away. Think of the Chelidae, the Shell Folk. Their home is Castellon. Like, they are the native sentient species to Castellon. They're on the Colossus. Now they're gone. Now, they did seem to be very helpful in all that. They were helping Niku take off, so they're probably just against the First Order, but uh, I would like to see how Flix and Orca feel about this. Like, they have a business on the Colossus, and now it's mobile and being shot through the air to wherever Niku put coordinates in. So I can't imagine that they're happy about that. And they're probably going to take some warming up to. They, I like kind of see them joining the resistance at some point, but probably not a right, probably not right away. They're probably going to need, you know, some convincing. And for our last patron question, Colby Cowherd wants to know why Opeepit didn't get his floor scrubber back. I tell you, I am a little bummed that we didn't get to see that happen because they have been following that uh, storyline through multiple episodes, like it's taken away, and then in the next episode he has to wash the floor with his hands, and then in the episode where they sink the station, like it's getting all messy, so I was hoping to see him be reunited with his beloved floor scrubber. But there was a lot going on, probably not time for that. I expect that he will have it back in season two. Hopefully he like gets to hug it and stuff. Um, but for the most part, I mean, it's got to be on the Colossus somewhere. Like, I don't think the Stormtroopers took it away and put it on a shuttle. They probably just took it away and put it in a closet somewhere. I think he will get it back. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, that was such a fun through line. Uh, the uh, oh peep it is now one of my favorite little in jokes of the show so i want him to be happy on to youtube questions spencer beck asks if zay or shriv from battlefront 2 could appear in resistance that is something i would really love to see i don't know why but i feel like shriv would fit into this world so well and yeah we know that from the battlefront 2 dlc campaign that Zay and Shriv get sent off by Leia to go find allies in the Outer Rim. So I think that the potential is there, that they could be out searching and they could run into the Colossus. And that's something I could see happening in the first half of Season 2, because Zay and Shriv weren't in The Last Jedi at all. Like, where were they? What was their mission? We could get to see that. Why didn't they come back? And I think that just Shriv interacting with any of the characters. I would love to see that. If you haven't played the Battlefront 2 story mode, Shriv is probably the best part. So I, I would really love to see him come back in any fashion. And they haven't been ignoring the character. Uh, he popped up in one of the Star Wars Adventures comics, which is aimed at a similar audience as Star Wars Resistance, I would say. So yeah, I think there's a lot of potential to see Shriv again, and I hope it happens. Jake Dempsey wants to know why Agent Tierney was working so hard to win over Tam. Was there anything special about her? I think that she just saw an opportunity. I mean, we saw that the First Order was recruiting on the Colossus, so I guess they don't get all of their uh, stormtroopers from kidnapping children. Uh, but maybe Tam would be like a candidate for an officer, uh, someone with a mind of her own that doesn't think that the First Order is all that bad if they can just finish pulling her over to the dark side, so to speak. So I, I think beyond that, they saw that Tam was sympathetic to the First Order and they probably knew they could get some information out of her. Uh, we also don't really know what's up with the Colossus, why the First Order cares about it so much. I, th I mean, Tierney knew that it was a ship of some sort, so... I feel like they know something and they were hoping to get more information out of Tam and we'll probably explore that more in season two. Spencer Jackson wants to know if the Crimson Corsair or Echo could show up. That's another one that I think would be awesome and would make a lot of sense. Uh, if you don't know, the Crimson Corsair is a character seen in The Force Awakens. Finn almost leaves with him uh, from Taco Donna. Well, he has a pirate crew and one member of their crew is a surviving clone trooper, one that was stuck in stasis after figuring out everything about the inhibitor chips. So he is still young-ish. I mean, like Clone Wars age, I would say. 
And now he's running around with a pirate crew because he's like, well, what else can I do? Like he was trying to save the Jedi and they've been dead for so long that he's like, I have nowhere else to turn. I guess I'm a pirate now. And I think that's super cool. Since this is a Dave Filoni production, I would kind of love it if they did find a way to pull a clone trooper into it. Uh, we had it in the Clone Wars, obviously. We had it in Star Wars Rebels. Let's get one in Star Wars Resistance. Let's do it. Uh, I think it would be really interesting to see what a clone trooper thinks of everything that's going on now. And yeah, kind of all of those little side scum and villainy side characters from The Force Awakens or The Last Jedi... I think there's potential for them to reappear in uh, Star Wars Resistance, and I think that it would be a lot of fun. Joseph Simpson wants to know which episode and new character is my favorite. Uh, I already did mention my new favorite character is probably Hype, uh, just for the limited amount of screen time he had. He was very entertaining, but of the main cast, I mean, it's a toss-up probably between Kaz and Eager. I really, really like Eager. I also like Doza a lot. It makes sense that, I mean, I'm 32, so I relate more to the adult characters than Kaz, who is meant to relate more to the younger audience, uh, despite him being in his 20s. But yeah, I, I relate a lot to characters like Yeager. I really like his tragic backstory. I don't like it, you know. It's interesting. I'm sad for him, but uh, I want to know more about his past and any story that focused on him. Uh, I, I perked up. Uh, my favorite episode is probably the Doza Dilemma. I really liked seeing all the storylines come together. We had the Aces. We had the First Order. We had the Pirates. And kind of a bunch of storylines came together. And that's what really kicked the show into high gear, I guess. That's when the First Order got their foot in the door onto the Colossus by saving Tora in a plot that they thought up. So yeah, I, I thought that episode was a lot of fun. I also just love the pirate ship design. It's like a flying ship, but it looks like a boat. It's so cool. And like the crow's nest is an ATTE foot. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, that, that was just kind of a lot of things coming together that I, I really dug about that one episode. Rocky Hemingway asks if the Colossus will become a resistance base. I think probably, I think that maybe during the mid-season finale, uh, that's probably when they'll join back up with the Resistance, and they will probably be in desperate need of some place to just hang out and chill. Uh, I expect they'll have been on the run ever since Crate, and yeah, having them be on the Colossus would be really cool. And then we could explore that further after Episode Nine. but beyond that, I really want that kind of Rogue One Star Wars Rebels connectivity where you got to see the ghost flying around and Chopper was there and you heard Hera's name over the intercom. I'd really love it if there were a like massive space battle in Episode 9, if we could see the Colossus, if we could see the Fireball and the other Ace Starfighters flying around and helping out. I think that would be so cool. And it wouldn't have to be anything more than that. I mean, you could have the voice actors just do like, you know, intercom, like I'm hit or I'm I'm on him. There's I can't shake him. Like, you know, just standard pilot dialogue that you always get some little some yeehoos every now and then. If you had the voiceover actors do that and you got to see all the ships and the Colossus were part of the fleet, I would love that so much. And it wouldn't be too uh, distracting or obtrusive to people who hadn't watched Resistance. Damocles94 wants to know why the New Republic is so bad at training their recruits, because, like, Kaz was so goofy and he says he hadn't shot a blaster since basic training. I think that all comes down to the New Republic's ineptitude. I mean, uh, Leia was considered to be a warmonger. That's why she went off to start the Resistance, so that there actually was, like, a military and people who could fight the First Order because she knew they were a threat and the New Republic was just kind of complacent. And they were like, the galaxy's at peace. They had their heads in the sand. They didn't want to acknowledge that war could happen again. And part of that was just like, it, it seemed like a very lax military. I don't think that they were good at training their people. I think that was part of the problem. And I, I mean, it's played for laughs because kids show and Kaz, he's goofy. We get it. 
But also, I think that the New Republic just didn't train their people and they didn't have a great military because they were just like, we are the power now and everything is fine. The Empire's never coming back. We don't have to worry. And they were wrong. So, yeah, I, I think that that's why they were so bad at training their troops. Ben Wilshi asks if I think we'll see any more from Kaz's father since there was a point to scramble his appearance. Yeah, I... I'm skeptical that Kaz's family is all dead, and normally I would be, I don't know, against that idea. I remember in season four of Star Wars Rebels, like at the end of the first episode, you think that Sabine's family has all been killed. And then immediately after, in the next episode, they're like, no, we're fine. We somehow survived this, like, massacre of Mandalorian people, but we two people survived. So I guess part of me is like, oh, I don't know if I want Kaz's family to be alive. But if there's this added twist that they were first order sympathetic senators, that that's a different story like that introduces a lot of conflict for Kaz. And I, yeah, I don't know why they scrambled his appearance. It could have been, I mean, they say in the show that it was because it had to be scrambled because we're in this remote location, no one can know where we are. Uh, that could have just been so that they didn't have to develop a new model for this character that was just going to appear in this one episode, in this one scene, because those assets take time and money. So if they just scramble a silhouette, there you go. We hire a voice actor and then we're done. But I don't know. I could see it meaning the complete opposite, that this is important and it's going to come back later. So I'm on the fence right now, and I, I think that there is a possibility for Mr. Ziono to come back. But if he does, uh, I, I hope it means some personal turmoil for Kaz and not just like a happy reunion. Daniel Hales wants to know if we'll get to see more of the inner workings of the First Order from Tam's point of view. Uh, so just yesterday I put out a video about like my hopes and dreams for season two. And I talked about the show Battlestar Galactica a couple of times. And there are a lot of things that Resistance reminds me about Battlestar Galactica at the point it is now. And at the end or the beginning, I'm sorry, of season three of that show, uh, one of the main characters is kind of in a Tam position where they are taken with the bad guys and then we get to see the inner workings of the bad guys, which is something that we mostly hadn't like been able to witness before. And we get to see it through this character's eyes. So, yeah, I think that we're probably going to be in a similar situation. I don't think that Tam is just going to disappear and become a side character. I still think she will be a main character of the show. And we'll probably get to see a lot uh, about the First Order through her eyes. And... What that means, I don't know. It could be all, like, stuff that the First Order is allowing her to see, and they're hiding all of the dark stuff. But uh, either way, I'm intrigued, and I'm excited. Alex Font asks if I thought Bebo or his mother would make an appearance later in the season. I did. Um, that episode is really the only one that I would consider to be filler, and it's still, like, it's teaching you more about Niku's character, and that's fine. That's not all completely filler then to me, but I did expect them to return kind of like in a, uh, the Pergil, the way that they returned in Star Wars Rebels in a big way. Uh, now we're off of Castellan, like who knows, we could see them down the line in future seasons, but the fact that the ship that the Colossus has left Castellan makes me think, okay, probably not <laughs> unless Bebo somehow stowed away or something, but I doubt it. Uh, I don't think we're going to see Bebo or his mother again. And yeah, I was surprised by that. I was thinking that if they're introducing this now, it'll probably play into a future episode. And it didn't. And eh, oh, well. Sean Criscoll wants to know if the Colossus will find a car after it's been abandoned and destroyed. Yeah, I kind of think so. I think that they're going to spend some time lost in the unknown regions or just in the galaxy somewhere. I don't know. But I do get this sense that they're going to start being like a frustrating step behind the actual resistance for a while. They will show up to Dakar after the Battle of Dakar, and there will be the remains of uh, Captain Kennedy's ship. 
the full matrix was trying to be all fancy and remember it and it took me a second uh the dreadnought and they'll find the ruins of the base and then they'll probably find their way to crate and again they'll see the remains of a battle there but they won't find the resistance itself until probably the end of the first half of the season but there you go. That's 20 questions answered about Star Wars Resistance. Hopefully that was a fun look back and ahead at the show at what we might see in Star Wars Resistance Season 2. Uh, we're going to probably get the first trailer for it on the Monday of Star Wars Celebration, I think. And maybe if people are actually uh, in the room, at least in 17, we got to see the first episode of Season 4 of Star Wars Rebels. So... I'm kind of hoping they do the same thing for Resistance Season 2, uh, just to hold us over. But then it's like, you have to deal with that long wait before the second episode, because it's probably not going to come back until like October, who knows. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you want to check out my other Resistance videos, I've been doing Resistance videos pretty much all week to celebrate the uh, season finale. And I did reviews on all of the episodes as they came out, so you can check out that playlist. But if you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.